talk through an example of how to calculate cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. We've been given some selected data and we're going to use it to make both of those items. So the first thing that we're going to need to figure out is what cost of goods manufactured is. If we don't have this number, I can't figure out cost of goods sold because I need cost of goods manufactured to determine cost of goods sold. So that needs to be the first thing we figure out. Now remember, cost of goods manufactured. Think of manufacturing costs. We talked about these. There were three types of manufacturing costs. Materials, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead or factory overhead. So when we talk about cost of goods manufactured, those three things should come to mind. Now you could have already had something that's partially completed. So you were working on some products, maybe you didn't quite get them done. So they're not finished yet, but they're not in that raw materials inventory that we talked about either. So we also need to consider um, work in process when we talk about that. And that's going to be our starting point actually. We're going to start by looking at beginning work in process. So let's go ahead and start to make up a schedule or a cost of goods manufactured schedule. Here, and we'll start making that cost of goods manufactured schedule. Remember, with any type of financial statement or financial report, we need to always put a heading first. And the first thing in our heading would be our company name. We're just going to make up a generic XYZ company. Oops. And then we need to state what this report or financial statement is. This is a cost, can't spell today, sorry guys, cost of, really bad, goods manufactured schedule. And then we need to put the date or the period of time. This is for a time period, not one specific date. So this is going to be for our entire year. So we're going to put for the year ended December 31st. And we'll just put 2000XX. We don't know quite what year. Now I know that it's for the whole year and I know when that ends because of the data we looked at. I noticed if we go back to that data that I had some inventory figures they had given me and the beginnings were January 1 and the endings were December 31st. So this looks like we've got a complete fiscal year that we're dealing with. Now let me go back. I'm going to go ahead and start this. Cost of goods manufactured. You need to start by looking at beginning work in process. So I'm going to put work in process January 1. All right. And I'll just tab over a few places. Yeah, about there looks good. And let's go back and look. What is our beginning work in process balance? Well, we see that it is right there, $32,000. So let's input that on our schedule. 32,000. Okay. Now, if we, this is bugging me, let's center our title. There we go, it looks better. All right, so 32,000, that tells me that we were working on $32,000 worth of product when we began January 1. It wasn't finished, it was still in process. Well, if I want to figure out the cost of the goods I actually manufactured in a period, then those costs already associated with what was partially finished, I definitely need to consider. I also need to consider costs that were added to that. If it was only partially completed, I would have had to add some additional materials perhaps. I might have had to add some labor to make the materials into a finished good to convert those materials. And I probably also had some overheads, manufacturing or, or factory overhead applied to these. So the next thing I need to look at are those three manufacturing costs. So let's see what kind of data I had and what that can tell me. Well, I've been given raw materials inventories. Okay. Um, got finished goods. I don't really need that right now. Okay, well, there's direct labor. We talked about that. What else have we been given? indirect labor, raw materials purchased, all right, sales, factory equipment depreciation, office equipment depreciation, sales salaries, factory supervisor salaries, 
factory insurance, office insurance, and factory utilities. Well, let's focus on materials first, our first type of manufacturing cost. I'm not told explicitly how much materials that we have used. If so, I could just input that directly. So I'm going to have to figure that out. I can do that. I know how much materials I had to begin with. I know how much I purchased. And then I know how much I was left over. Out of that, I can figure out how much that I used. So let's go back and start building that materials section. So we know we need direct materials figure. So our raw materials on January 1st, you can put inventory there if you want to. Um, that was $24,000. Well, to that, we purchased some additional. We had some to begin with. We bought some more over the year. So I'll put raw materials purchased. And let's go back and look. Don't remember that figure. We had 24,000 in beginning inventory for raw materials and I bought 130,000. So we can add 130,000 to that figure. Oops. Make this look a little bit nicer. All right. So this if I add these two together, that's how much I could have used. So this is total raw materials available for use. I could have used that much. Did I? Possibly. We'll find out in just a second. But that's how much I could have used. So let's go back. And we did have some left over. So that tells me I did not use all of the materials. We had 29,000 left over. So let's go in here and put less raw materials December 31st. And that was that $27,000. So that's going to tell me direct material used. Because I could have used the 154. I didn't know. And I know that I didn't because we had 27000 left over at the end of the period. So obviously, I didn't use those. I used the difference between those. So in total, I really used... 127,000, that difference. Okay, good. We've taken care of direct materials. Well, how about direct labor? That's the next manufacturing overhead. Let's see what they told me about direct labor. Well, we find direct labor there. They've given us explicitly it was $168,000. So let's go and input that over here under our direct materials. Direct labor was $168,000. Alright, well that was easy. So then we have manufacturing overhead to consider. Alright, let's go and look at manufacturing overhead. Did they tell us that explicitly? No. Okay, so I need to figure out which of these accounts are manufacturing overhead. Well, these are inventory accounts. That's direct labor. How about indirect labor? Is that classified as manufacturing overhead? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's just put a little uh, MF out to the side. Manufacturing overhead, not MF. MO, manufacturing overhead. Uh, raw materials purchased, no, that was part of our direct materials. Sales, that's an income account. It's not manufacturing overhead. Factory equipment depreciation. Does it have to do with manufacturing the product? It has to do with the factory, so I'd say yes. So let's mark that one. Office equipment. Hmm. Does it have anything to do with the manufacturing side? So that wouldn't actually be a product expense at all. That would be a period expense. So no, that's not going to be manufacturing overhead. Sales salaries. Again, this doesn't have to do with manufacturing the product. That has to do with selling expenses, which are period cost. So we're going to keep on going. Factory supervisor salaries. Yeah, that one sounds like manufacturing overhead. Has to do with making the product in the factory. Same thing for factory insurance. Office insurance, again, that's an administrative expense. That's a period cost. So we're not going to include that one. But factory utilities, absolutely. 
Okay, so we've identified a few manufacturing overhead costs. What we need to do though is rank these in, just like we do in the income statement, largest to smallest. So, you can look through these, but I've already looked over them and know that we should have factory supervisors. Well, there we go. Salaries first, factory utilities, factory equipment depreciation. My grammar check is coming in. There we go. Indirect labor, factory insurance, and that was everything. So that'll be total manufacturing overhead. Okay, let's just input. Do a little formatting here. And then let's put our numbers in. So we've got 103,000 here. Whoops, sorry. 14,000. 12,000, 11,000, and 6,000. So all of that totals up to $146,000. So we're going to put that in line with our other data that we have above. All right, now, those are our three manufacturing costs. That's what we added to what we had already started at the beginning of the period. So this is going to be what we entitle total manufacturing cost, the total of these three items. And that's going to be $441,000. We add that to our beginning work in process. So we can just entitle this total cost of work in process. That's going to be $473,000. Alright, well, is that the total cost of goods manufactured? Well, I don't know. Did we have anything left? Let's go back and look. Were we still working on some items at the end of the period? We find that by looking at that work in process inventory. And yes, we had 29,000 still that we hadn't completed at the end of the period. So obviously, we can't include that in cost of goods manufactured because we haven't manufactured them in total yet. So we need to take those away. So let's subtract, subtract our work in process ending balance as of December 31st. And that was $29,000. So now that's going to be able to tell me what our actual cost of goods manufactured was. And for us, in this example, that's $444,000. Give you some more lines so that makes a little bit more sense. There you go. All right, it's cost of goods manufactured. Stay tuned. We're going to do cost of goods sold in the next segment.